fossil section. ويجوز للمسافر قصر الصلاة الرباعية بأربعة شرائط. It is permissible for the traveler to shorten the fourfold prayer under four conditions. أن يكون سفره في غير معصية. Then the first condition he mentions is that his travel would be for other than a sin. So I see here in what's being displayed to you, it says five conditions. Remember, I'm reading another nuskha, another copy of Abu Shuja. So there's slight variances there. Asharhu, the explanation. Al-kitabu wa sunnatu wa ijma'u al-ummati على جواز القصر في السفر في السفر المباح الطويل The book, the prophetic way and the consensus of the nation are upon the permissibility of shortening the prayer for a long permissible journey قال الله تعالى الله تعالى said وإذا ضربتم في الأرض فليس عليكم جناح أن تقصروا وإذا ضربتم في الأرض فليس عليكم جناح أن تقصروا من الصلاة إن خفتم When you travel the land, then there is no burden on you for shortening the prayer. If you are afraid, al ayah, etc., until the end of the verse. Wa darbu fil ardi safar. Going out into the land means embarking on a journey. وفي الصحيحين عن ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه And it was reported in the two books in the two authentic books from the route of Ibn Mas'ud may Allah accept him You know Ibn Mas'ud yes Inshallah you know who's Ibn Mas'ud You also keeping track of the names of companions in your notes and your categorization of things Fati, inshallah, you know who's you know who's Ibn Mas'ud. May Allah accept from him. Qala sallaytu ma'a Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raka'atayn, raka'atayn, wa ma'a Abi Bakrin raka'atayn, wa ma'a Umar raka'atayn. He said, I prayed with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, two rakahs, two rakahs. And with Abu Bakr, two rakahs. And with Umar, two rakahs. Or call Ibn Umar. And Ibn Umar said, Safartu ma'a Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa Abi Bakrin wa Umar. I traveled with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar وَكَانُوا يُصَلُّونَ الظُّهْرَ وَالْعَصْرَ رَكَعَتَيْنِ رَكَعَتَيْنِ They used to pray Dhuhr and Asr to Raka'as to Raka'as And as for the ayah that I recited for you in khiftum, if you are afraid, this is not a condition for shortening the prayer. Rather, it is permissible if the condition of traveling is fulfilled, whether you are afraid or you weren't afraid.
ثم شرط السفر أن يكون في غير معصية. Furthermore, the condition of the travel or the journey is that it would be for other than a sin. فيشمل الواجب كسفر الحج. So that includes the obligatory, like a journey for pilgrimage. والمندوبة كحج التطوع. And a recommended travel, like a voluntary pilgrimage. والمباح كسفر التجارة والتنزه. And it even includes the indifferent travel. Indifferent means neither rewardable nor punishable. Mubah, permissible if you want. Like traveling for trade and for sightseeing. قال الإمام ولا يشترط كون السفر طاعة باتفاق. Imam al Haramain said, It is not a condition for the journey to be an act of worship by agreement. واحترز الشيخ بقوله في غير معصية عن سفر المعصية And by saying for other than a sin the Shaykh Abu Shuja avoided a journey that was for a sin. كالسفر لقطع الطريق like traveling so to be a highway robber. Traveling to a spot to ambush the caravans. وَسَفَرِ الْمَرْأَةِ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِ زَوْجِهَا And a woman traveling without the permission of her husband. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. So the woman can't travel. Yani, she cannot embark on a journey. Without a mahram. The proof for that, the summary of the proof for that, is merging the hadiths that came about this. And I'm giving you Shafiri school. Merging the hadiths that came about this issue, the result of that merger is that a woman cannot embark on a journey without a mahram. Saying that a woman could travel with some other reliable, trustworthy women, that's another school. Now I'm giving you Shafiri school. But if she has an excuse, she can travel without a mahram. An excuse includes performing an obligatory hajj. But she wouldn't be obligated to embark on that journey. So don't mix those two. We're not saying if she has an obligatory hajj and she doesn't have a mahram that she's obligated to travel. She's not obligated to travel here. But she's allowed to. To fulfill the obligatory pilgrimage. Also, she can travel for obligatory Umrah. Umrah is obligatory in Shafi'i school. But let her be mindful. If she traveled for obligatory Umrah, she can't go sightseeing. So she avoids going to the Prophet's grave, alayhi salatu wasalam, and going here and there which are journeys outside of the mission of fulfilling that obligation.
Also, some examples are like if she can't find work where she is. So she wouldn't be obligated to just stay where she is and not travel and then be homeless, for example. Or she doesn't have a teacher where she is, so she travels to learn. Or someone else doesn't have a teacher, so she travels to teach that one. Or she wants to go to the land of Muslims. She relocates to the Muslim country from the Kafir country. And also sinful is the journey of a runaway slave. So he cannot shorten his prayer during this journey. وَسَفَرِ الْمَدِينِ الْقَادِرِ عَلَى الْوَفَاءِ بِغَيْرِ إِذْنِ صَاحِبِ الدَّيْنِ And also, an indebted person who's able to pay his debt and it's due. For him to travel without the permission of the debtor. Uh, there might be some detail here for this case. So that's, I'm just reading to you the words here. It says, وَسَفَرِ الْمَدِينِ الْقَادِرِ عَلَى الْوَفَاءِ بِغَيْرِ إِتْنِ صَاحِبِ الدَّيْنِ For a person who owes, who owes a debt to travel, and he's able to fulfill this debt to travel without the permission of the one who deserves that debt. So, perhaps there's some details there. Maybe there's some branches there. وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكْ And the likes of that. فَهَاُلَاءِ وَأَشْبَاهُهُمْ لَا يَتَرَخَّصُونَ بِالْقَصُرُ So, those ones and people like them do not have the facility do not have the facility of shortening their prayers. Because shortening the prayer is a facility. And this journey is a sin. And facilities do not accommodate sins. Yeah, I said debtor is the so the lender. I thought the debtor is the one who okay, so the lender, yes, without the permission of the lender. Thank you. Wakama La Yako Surul Asi Bisafari La Yajma Ubaina Salatain. And just like the sinner does not shorten his prayer during his journey. He neither can combine them. However, if a person sinned during his travel, this does not remove his permission. What will block him is for the travel itself to be a sinful one. Not that it is itself a permissible one, but he sinned during it. And if he missed a prayer, he can still make it up shortened as long as he's a traveler. Even if he missed it sinfully. وَاَحْتَرَزَ الشَّيْخُ بِالصَّلَاةِ الرُّبَاعِيَّةِ عَنِ الْمَغْرِبِ وَالصُّبْحِ and by specifying the fourfold prayers, the Shaykh Abu Shuja avoided the Maghrib prayer, the sunset prayer, and the dawn prayer. فَإِنَّهُمَا لَا تُقُصَرَانِ 
Those two are not shortened. Qal al-Rafi'iyu wa-Nawawiyu bil-Ijma' Al-Rafi'i and al-Nawawi both said, by consensus, those are not shortened. Wallahu a'lam and Allah knows best. Qal al-Musannifu rahimahullah said the author, may Allah have mercy upon him. وَأَن تَكُونَ مَسَافَتُهُ سِتَّةَ عَشَرَ فَرْسَخَا And that the distance or its distance would be 16 فَرْسَخْس فَرْسَخْ Did you know that that uh, show called Star Trek they have a measurement of travel they call it the parsec the parsec or something like that maybe I'm saying it wrong so it looks like they took that from here farsakh and when we say that it has to be 16 farsakhs we're talking one way not both ways not that it can be 8 one way and then 8 coming back, so that's 16. And what that amounts to, 16 farsakhs, is two-day traveling distance. A two-day traveling distance. Two-day walking distance. Some of them said walking Yani, human footsteps, human footsteps, some of them said two-day camel footsteps. Two days means two day times or two night times. Not a day and a night and a day and a night. And two days two-day walking distance does not include downtime for rest, bathroom, prayer, and eating. As sharh, the explanation يشترط في جواز القصر كون السفر طويلا. It is a condition for the permissibility of shortening the prayer. That the journey be long. وهو ستة عشر فرسخا. That is a distance of sixteen فرسخس. كما ذكره الشيخ just like the sheikh said sheikh abu shuja said in the matin وهو ثمانية وأربعون ميلا بالهاشمي that is the equivalent of 48 hashimi miles وهي أربعة برود أعني الفراسخ وَهِيَ مَسِيرَةُ يَوْمَيْنِ مُعْتَدِلَيْنِ So it means what I already told you. That's a distance of two days. Two average days. Medium days. And the sea has the same judgment as the land. Traveling by sea has the judgment, the same judgment as traveling by land. So if you travel day and night, that's the two day walking distance. If you travel day and night, that's two day walking distance. Because we said it's two day times or two night times. So if you go day and night, one day with its night together, that's two-day walking distance.
And what's meant here is from Fajr to a little bit after Maghrib. That's one of those blocks of time. We said a daytime and a daytime or a nighttime and a nighttime. So that means, and it's medium. So that means, for example, that you started at Fajr and you went all the way until a little bit after Maghrib. So that's your one day time. Here, a little bit after Maghrib, that's indefinite there, Yanni. That's uh, vague. That's obscure. So what do you do with those? Those obscurities, you need to understand them. Don't be confused by them. When you learn fiqh, don't be confused by the obscurity. Understand it, and then you will have understanding. Then you will comprehend. And the measure is by a camel, a camel's stride, if that's a load-bearing camel. The measure is by a load-bearing camel's stride. And like I said for you, including break time and prayer time and eating and drinking and the like. Yes. So those two measures that I told you, as if they are the same, meaning by walking on foot, you're human walking on foot, two day walking distance, or also two day walking distance at the pace of a load bearing camel, as if those are the same there. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَسَافَةَ الرُّجُوعِ لَا تُحْسَبِ And know that the distance of return is not counted. فَلَوْ قَصَدَ مَوْضِعًا عَلَى مَرْحَلَةٍ بِنِيَّةِ أَلَّا يُقِيمٍ فَلَيْسَ لَهُ أَنْ يَقُصُرَ لَا ذَهَابًا وَلَا إِيَابًا So, had someone made a place one's destination and this place is one marhala one day walking distance and he did not have the intention to stay there so then he's going to come back that's another marhala so this one, he cannot uh, shorten, coming or going. And if a person deliberately took the longer route so to be able to shorten, then he cannot shorten. He sought the longer route, then he can't shorten. And if a person traveled to shorten, then he cannot shorten. If he traveled so that he could shorten, then he cannot shorten. Because it's a condition that the travel is for a reason that people travel for. And shortening the prayer is not a reason for traveling. وَعَلَمْ أَيْضًا أَنَّهُ لَا بُدَّ لِلْمُسَافِرِ مِنْ رَبْطِ قَصْدِهِ بِمَوْضِعٍ مَعْلُومٍ And know also that it is a condition that the traveler has a destination, a known destination. فَلَا يَقُصُرُ الْهَائِمِ Therefore, a wanderer cannot shorten his prayers even if he wandered for a long journey. 
because he never had any destination in particular. And similar is someone who was searching for his animal or his wife. And so in the process of that, he wound up at a distance that's a long journey. This one cannot shorten and combine. He didn't have a destination. And there is no scholar who said that a person is obligated to have the intention to shorten his prayers. Meaning, not talking about when you start your prayer and you want to shorten your prayer. Talking about basically what people call intending to be a traveler. Some people say, when do I make my intention to be a traveler? So you don't have to have an intention to be a traveler. What do you have to do? You have to be a traveler. You'll be a traveler when you breach the wall of the town. If the town has a wall. Imagine you live in a town that has a wall. A nice Muslim town. So then, once you leave that wall, you're a traveler, Yanni, and you're going to go the distance we talked about. Once you get out of that wall, you're a traveler. If your town doesn't have a wall, then when you get out of the uh, metropolis, when you get out of the buildings... Well, what I mean by the metropolis is all the towns that are together. All the towns that are connected together. So that when you get out of one town and get into the next town, there's still buildings. It's like you're still in the city. That's what I mean. Once you get out of the metropolis, there's no more buildings. Then you're a traveler. If your town doesn't have a wall. Yes. You said, just to clarify the matter about the woman traveling without a mahram, did you say she is allowed to travel for the purpose of going to the lands of the Muslims and leaving the lands of the kuffar? Yes. She's relocating. That's correct. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. So, if a um, person who delivers packages, um, that's his job, and he has different stops, and he's not aware that these stops will take him the travel distance, uh, because he doesn't, for example, know the area. So he's going from stop to stop, stop to stop, um, he didn't make the intention uh, to go to a travel town, per se, but it just happened to be that distance. Um, he, he cannot started, shorten and combine. It, and that's because he didn't have an intention? It's because he didn't have a destination. A destination? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, what Yes, sir. I mean, He said one farsakh is three Hashimi miles. And one mile is four thousand steps. And one step is three paces. Meaning, paces of a load-bearing camel. (laughs) 
قال المصنف رحمه الله said the author may Allah have mercy upon him وأن يكون مؤديا للصلاة الرباع الرباعية وأن يكون مؤديا للصلاة الرباعية and that the person would be praying a current fourfold prayer وأن ينوي القصر مع الإحرام and that he intends to shorten while saying Allahu Akbar. Asharh, the explanation. Hujjatu kawni salati lati tuqusar an takuna muaddatan an takuna muaddatan lima marra min al-adillah the evidence that the prayer that is shortened has to be a current prayer is in the previously mentioned proofs. So concerning a makeup prayer, if one missed it while residing, and made it up while traveling, he's obligated to pray it at full length. That's because it got put into his account as four rakahs. It's like as if to say, that's because he got billed with four rakahs when he missed that. That's his tab. Got put on his tab four rakahs. Wa in fatati salatu fi safari kadaha fi safari fi safar a kasra. And if he missed the prayer while traveling, then he can make it up. Shortened. In kadaha. وَإِنْ قَضَاهَا فِي الْحَضَرِ أَتَمْ But if he doesn't make it up until he becomes a resident, then he must pray it at full length. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ شَرْطَ الْقَصْرِ أَنْ يَنْوِيَهُ Know that it is a condition for shortening the prayer that you make an intention. That you intend to do so. Because the origin is to pray at full length. So if one does not intend to shorten the prayer while saying Allahu Akbar, then it will initiate at full length according to the origin وَيُشْتَرَطُ أَن تَكُونَ نِيَةُ الْقَصْرِ وَقْتَ الْإِحْرَامِ بِالصَّلَاةِ كَنِيَّتِهِ وَلَا يُشْتَرَطُ دَوَامُ ذِكْرِهَا and it's a condition that the intention to shorten the prayer would be at the time of saying Allahu Akbar like what his prayer intention would be originally. And it's not a condition to remain mindful about this intention. وَلَوْ شَكَّ هَلْ نَوَى الْقَصُرُ أَمْ لَا لَزِيمَهُ الْإِتْمَامُ And if a person doubted, Yani, after his prayer commenced, he doubted, did I intend to shorten or not? Then he would be obligated to pray at full length. Subhanallah. So this lupul uh, kifaya here, we've been going over this for some weeks now. And I think I'm just finally getting the hang of this book. 
to be honest with you. I don't know about you. That's although I studied it before too. But there's something technical about the book that I didn't really grasp, but, but I think I got it now. Alhamdulillah. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ لِلْقَصْرِ أَرْبَعَةَ شُرُوطُ And know that the shortening has four conditions. أَحَدُهَا النِّيَّةُ كَمَا ذَكَرَهُ الشَّيْخِ One of them is the intention like the shaykh said, Abu Shuja' rahimahullah. وَالثَّانِي أَنْ يَكُونَ مُسَافِرًا مِنْ أَهْلِ الصَّلَاةِ Sorry, min awal is salati, wa thani an yakuna musafiran min awal is salati ila akhiriha. The second condition is that a person would be a traveler from the time he started the prayer until the time he finished the prayer. Fellow nawal ikamata fi athnaiha, o intahat bi his safina tu ila daril ikama. So, if a person intended to be a resident while praying, that means by his intention in his heart, he's cutting off his travel. He's saying, now I reside here, where I am. Then he would be obligated to pray that prayer at full length, even though he started it as a traveler. Or, his vessel landed or parked while he was traveling. Yani, while he was praying, rather. So he was praying as a traveler. And then his vessel landed or parked. Now making him a resident, meaning he's arrived. He's not a traveler anymore. Then he has to pray his prayer. He has to finish his prayer at full length. وَالثَّالِثُ أَنْ يَعْلَمَ بِجَوَازِ الْقَصْرِ The third is that he even knows that he's allowed to shorten his prayer. فَلَوْ جَهِلَ جَوَازَهُ فَقَصَرَ لَمْ تَصِحَّ صَلَاتُهُ so, if he did not even know that he was allowed to shorten his prayer, but he did, then his prayer is not valid. Like, imagine he saw some people doing it, so he did like them, without knowing its permissibility. وَالشَّرْطُ الرَّابِعِ أَلَّا يَأْتَمَّ بِمُقِيمٍ يعني لا يقتدي بمقيم The fourth condition is that he does not follow a resident meaning a resident who's praying at full length أو بمتم في جزء من صلاته Nor does he pray behind someone who prays at full length at any part of his prayer فإن فعله لزمه الإتمام If he does so, he's obligated to pray his prayer at full length so, but how did he get here? What did he say? Five conditions. So he said that the distance, he's praying fourfold prayer. He intends to shorten while in Ihram, and that he would not follow a resident. So, it is permissible for the traveler to shorten the fourfold prayer under five conditions that his travel would not be sinful. One, that the distance would be 16 farsakhs. Two, that he would be performing a current prayer. Three, that he intends to shorten during the ihram. Four, and that he would not follow a resident. Five. 
So how does my copy have four? What's the difference? So it says here, be arbaati it under four conditions that his travel would not be sinful. That's one. That the distance would be sixteen farseks. That's two. That he would be praying a current prayer. That's that's three. And that he would intend while saying Allahu Akbar. That's four. Uh, doesn't mention the last one. That he would not follow a resident. That's not in the copy I'm reading now. This fifth one. But it's an explanation. So the explanation caught it and mentioned it. But the medicine doesn't have it. Any question? It says, resident has a religious meaning beyond a person who simply resides in that area, right? Yes. There are three levels. Traveler, Musafir. Muqim, resident. And Mustautlin, I'm going to say citizen. But our literature says inhabitant. So, traveler is a person who stays in a town for three days or less, not including entry and exit days. Muqim is a person who stays in a town for four days or more, not including entry or exit days and without any limit. When you say more, there's no limit there. And citizen is a person who does not leave the town, neither in the summer nor in the winter, except for some errand, and then comes back.